Chris Funk, Superintendent for Eastside. So the A through G requirements are the 15 sequential classes that a student needs to take to be eligible for the UC CSU system. So we currently have uh, A through G default curriculum, meaning that we're trying to make all of our courses as much as possible A through G alignment. But A through G graduation requirement would be that the default requirement would be that every student graduates from east side uh, meeting those sequential classes to be eligible for the CS, C, UCCSU. So uh, we, we will have a committee that will work on that recommendation. I think at the earliest they would come in would be for the class of 2019. So that would be uh, starting the year 2015, the class of 2015. Now, the question that needs to be decided, and there's many questions that need to be decided still, is that do we just start with that class or do we allow other students that are currently sophomores, juniors, or seniors that show if they can reach the 180A through G, uh, then we change their graduation requirements uh, so that we can institute it quicker? Or do we just phase it in with the class of 2019 and then any class after that meets that? So those are some of the questions. So it's not just the 180 credits that are A through G, but we would keep this current staffing, that's a six period day that equals 220 credits, still available. So kids could take more than 180 credits, just like today kids take more than 220 credits. We could offer more enrichment courses, courses that kids would be more interested in taking as opposed to being required to take it because they have to take six classes for four years. Um, and it creates just more flexibility in one schedule. So now, not all, kids all four years have to take six classes and what will be some of the alternative pathways for kids because not all kids I don't think all kids are ready for college or want to go to college or should go to college I just want to make sure that we put them on a pathway that if they choose to go to college they've met the requirements that we've offered and I would say more than in general uh, people are behind the concept uh, in terms of some pushback, there are some teachers that feel that reducing our graduation requirements from 220 to 180, because that's what the A through G, the A through G are 15 sequential classes, and then the UC recommends three extra classes, an extra year of science, extra year of math, and the second year of world language. So that would be 18 classes. Some say that you're reducing the rigor or the expectations for students. I believe that if every student meets the A through G requirement, then that actually increases the rigor and I'm simply reducing some of the hurdles that kids have to do to graduate from high school. But along with the A through G would also be developing seminar classes that students would have to take. So in, in essence, we'd be replacing year-long courses with four to six week seminar uh, courses. And those courses are designed just to be more uh, to develop a more well-rounded uh, student uh, and then I asked the question last year uh, to all the schools does a high school diploma regardless of the high school you graduate from in East Side, mean the same thing and a lot of people said well no no if I go to Evergreen or Santa Teresa that diploma means something different than if I go to James Lick or Mount Pleasant and my question as a superintendent is that right? Or shouldn't all of our schools, shouldn't all those diplomas mean something and, and be very similar to what they mean? So that's part of the goal is to create a situation where I don't care if I'm at Piedmont Hills, James Lick, or Santa Teresa, if I reach A through G, I've met the requirements for UCCSU. And I think that's a positive thing. And I think that increases the rigor for all. The district is making moves to make the A through G the same thing as our high school requirements to graduate. So right now we have high school graduation and we have A through G requirements and they are not the same. So even if um, we had board approval tonight, it would still take two to three years for us to get everything in place and to get enough community involvement and participation to make that 
that big of a leap. Because that leap is going to come with a lot of other things in terms of support. So yeah, so students are on a default path, but it's not forced. Um, and so it's not a requirement. So that's, that's where it really gets, I think, confusing because I don't think people regularly use the word default and requirement as two different things. The, uh, the, the school board has decided that it is more important to have um, A through G as the default curriculum. What all that means is basically we will put students only in A through G courses um, until they've met their minimum requirements, but students can, um, there's, students do find ways to opt out and still graduate with a high school diploma. In my opinion, the only person to make that decision is the student, and they shouldn't make that decision until they reach the end of their junior year, going into their senior year. Um, I, I would hate to have a student pick a path at 14 years of age and then change their mind three years later and find out that they're no longer eligible. So it makes the most sense to me is that we stay on the A through G path through the junior year and at the end of the junior year if they've met the Algebra 2 requirement, that's the biggest one for me personally, then they can make that decision. But they could come in and say, I'm, I'm a trade school kid, I'm going to go to Wildtech or whatever other companies out there, I'm going to go to the culinary academy. Um, this is my path, this is my plan, I know I have options, but this is what I want to do. And that changes our conversation. But I don't feel like at this point we're ready to, um, to say that to a sophomore or a freshman. That, that's the thing about, that's why it seems kind of smart to, to use A through G as the default. We'd like to have a why not campus. So we have teachers who are proposing electives in English and other subject areas. Nothing is set, so I don't want to give any names away or anything like that, but why not? If, if, it's, if there are students who want to take, let's say, um, an English elective that interests them, uh, and it's A through G uh, as an elective course, why not? Why not get those experiences? Um, why not take that second year of guitar or if there's other things that teachers are really interested in starting on. What would happen if we made A through G a graduation requirement instead of a default? Um, and a lot of that hasn't been set yet. And it's still in the discussion phases and that's years away, but it's a really exciting idea in that um, everything's on the table. If we really want students to get to that A through G completion, can we look at graduation requirements in terms of the number of credits. Um, can we start students early at community college? Um, can, you know, if a student were to come to me, could they go on? I mean, everything's on the table, so it's really exciting. Could a senior come to me and say, I'm going to take four, year, four classes here and two classes at the community college? Um, and, and the superintendent's vision is that students would begin that process. Uh, because if they're really set on that path, let's get them started now in that senior year or possibly in that junior year. Um, so to me, it's, it's, it's genius.